So in the last video, we derived an expression for the continuity equation. We said that the change in hole concentration as a function of time was equal to the generation within a certain volume, uh, minus 3 combination, minus 1 over q, times the derivative of the whole current with respect to position. So in this video, we're going to be massaging this equation into a more usable form involving only the change in whole concentration, uh, any electric field, as well as the coefficients um, that, we, that we need, such as the mobility, etc. So if we want to, let's, let's massage this equation one part at a time. So let's take this g minus r term first. Well, we know that the generation can be written as just the equilibrium generation, so g naught, uh, plus the generation due to other sources like light being the main example that we've gone over in previous videos. And similarly, we know that the uh, recombination rate is just equal to R0, or the recombination rate at equilibrium, uh, plus delta P over tau P. And this we derived in a previous video. Uh, essentially, you can, you can think of it kind of like a spring. Uh, the more carriers we add, the faster they're going to recombine uh, to each other. This is almost exactly, it is exactly the spring equation. So if we take G minus R, then we know that G naught and R naught must be equal to each other because at equilibrium, by definition, there's no net increase or decrease in carriers. So these two will cancel out and we'll be left with GL minus delta P over tau P. And so this is our massaged term. In general, delta P might be a function of X and GL might also be a function of X. We might only be illuminating it in certain areas, but that's, that's implied. So I'm going to omit the as a function of X uh, notation. Now let's move on to this term, this 1 over Q DJP DX. And let's focus in particular just on the JP term or the whole current term. Uh, well, we know that the whole current can be written as the drift current, so JP drift, plus the diffusion current, JP diffusion. And recall that the diffusion current is due to the gradient of holes, so it's holes physically diffusing throughout the material. And the drift current is in response to an external electric field. And so we can actually expand these in a kind of interesting way. So we can say that JP uh, drift and JP diffusion, well, they've got an equilibrium component and they've got a non-equilibrium component. So we can say that this is just equal to JP not uh, drift plus J delta P drift plus JP not diffusion plus J delta P diffusion. And these uh, excessively long subscripts are just that. They're just subscripts. They're not multiplying anything. And uh, this might seem a little bit contrived, uh, but we know at equilibrium, the drift current and the diffusion current must be equal to zero. They don't have to independently be equal to zero, which is kind of interesting if you think about it. But together, the diffusion current and the drift current at equilibrium must add to zero because we have no net current in the semiconductor. So JP naught drift plus JP naught diffusion is equal to zero. And so we're just left with these delta terms. So JP is just equal to J delta P times, or J delta P drift, that's a subscript, not, not times, uh, plus J delta P diffusion. And well, we have equations for the drift and diffusion components of current. We know for drift, it's just Q, the whole charge, times the mobility mu P, times the electric field, times the concentration. And here the concentration is delta P instead of P, uh, plus the diffusion current, which is also Q times the diffusion coefficient, times the negative derivative with respect to X. And sorry, that should be D delta P. Uh, dx. And don't mind the uh, 
d delta uh, delta p is a single variable it's not it's not two things combined together and so if we just factor out the minus sign we get q mu p e delta p plus or minus q dp uh, d delta p dx and these are actually part this is actually a partial derivative because we've also got time as a function here and so that's that's cool uh, now that was just the expanded jp term so we know we've also got to put a one out one over q out front and take the derivative with respect to x so we're going to do that real quick so dp dt is equal to gl minus delta p over tau p uh, and now we've got this minus one over q term times d dx of this whole mess so q mu p e delta p minus q dp d delta p dx and yeah uh, this equation is starting to get kind of long but that's okay uh, this is just a derivation we in general this equation will greatly simplify and we won't actually have to worry about all of these terms so typically for example we're not dealing with light and we're probably not we might not deal with an electric field or a gradient of charge um, and the the one thing that we're missing is this is still the total hole concentration over here on the left so we want to expand this uh, so we want us to take a d delta t of p naught plus delta p well, we know that the time derivative of the equilibrium concentration is zero because it's equilibrium. Uh, so this is just equal to d delta p dt. So I've just written that as delta p in there. Okay, uh, so all that remains is to simplify this equation. So let's cancel out these q's. Uh, so those q's cancel, and then we take the derivative. So dt equals and I'm just gonna focus on this term here for now so if we take the derivative of the right hand term and multiply it by a negative we'll just get uh, let's actually just write out everything uh, so if we take the derivative of the right hand term that's just well dp isn't a function of x so it's just plus because it's negative times a negative d squared delta p dx squared so the second derivative and then minus uh, now this in the second term remember that e might be a function of x and delta p might be a function of x so we have to use the product rule to expand this and when we do that we'll get uh, mu p times derivative of the electric field with respect to x times delta p am i missing anything there uh, nope i don't think so minus mu p times the electric field times the derivative of the concentration with respect to x and this uh, monstrosity is our continuity equation for holes and this is a usable equation so we will uh, we'll go over a couple of examples in future videos but essentially We've got over here a drift component. So this, these terms over here are due to drift. Uh, this term here, oh, I'm actually missing a coefficient out front, dp. I thought that looked a little naked. Uh, we've got a drift component. We've got a diffusion component. We've got recombination and generation. And so this continuity equation is complete. It describes everything that might be happening to the semiconductor, even if it's probably not happening, at least not all at once. And so if we just, uh, we could redo this whole derivation for electrons, but I'm not going to because that would be kind of painful. Uh, I will just write it down here for completeness. Uh, the change in concentration of the electrons is just similarly uh, GL, minus delta n over tau n so generation recombinations exactly the same uh, plus dn times d squared delta n del x squared uh, the only difference is in these drift terms so instead of being negative they are positive so mu p d dx times delta n 
or sorry, this should be mu n uh, plus mu n e times d delta n dx. So this monstrosity is our continuity equation for electrons. And so we can apply each of these separately. And we can solve uh, these differential equations to give us what the charge distribution looks like as a function of space and time inside the semiconductor. And remember, that was all we ever wanted to know. We wanted to know, one, how many charge carriers are there? And two, how are they moving? So how are, what do they look like as a function of time and as a function of space? So now it, this video, after this video, we've developed all the fundamentals that we need to start analyzing devices. So we've got band diagrams, we've got now our continuity equations, and we can start actually working on devices. So in the next video, we're gonna go over the PN junction. Uh, we're gonna go over just an introduction to it, and then we're going to eventually apply uh, both band diagrams and this continuity equation to figure out how it behaves. And uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.